Hello everyone. In this third video on biochemistry of cancer, let's study about apoptosis. Evasion of apoptosis is the hallmark of cancer. At the end of this session, you should be able to define apoptosis, describe the stages and pathways of apoptosis with its regulation and explain how cancer cells evade apoptosis. Apoptosis is also called as programmed cell death. Many cells can precisely control the time of their own death by this process. It is derived from a Greek word for dropping off as in leaves dropping in the fall. It is a pathway of cell death in which cells enzyme degrade the cells own nuclear DNA, nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins. Apoptosis can be physiological or pathological. Apoptosis plays a key role in physiological processes. During embryogenesis, our hand development started out as a paddle-like block of tissue. This block is then carved into fingers by apoptosis of the cells in between the developing fingers. The monthly sloughing of cells of the uterine wall during menstruation is other example of apoptosis. Physiological apoptosis occurs during the turnover of proliferative tissues, for example, intestinal epithelium, lymphocytes in the bone marrow and thymus, elimination of potentially harmful self-reactive lymphocytes. Pathological apoptosis occurs when there is DNA damage or there is accumulation of misfolded proteins in the cells. There are four stages of apoptosis. Lack of survival signal DNA or protein damage activates the process of apoptosis. In the first stage, the cell shrinks in size and chromatin condenses. In the second stage, the plasma membrane of apoptotic cell remains intact but it is altered. It results in the formation of membrane blebbing and organelles present inside the cell disintegrate. In the third stage, there is formation of edible apoptotic bodies and the fourth stage is phagocytosis by, by macrophages. How apoptotic bodies are engulfed by phagocytosis? Apoptotic cells membrane phospholipid flips to the outer leaflet. So this is a phospholipid membrane flip and this flip is recognized by the receptors which are present on the tissue macrophages. In addition to that, dying cells also secrete soluble factors that recruit phagocytes and the phagocytosis of apoptotic cells is so efficient that dead cells disappear without leaving a trace and inflammation is virtually absent. Now let's see how apoptosis differs from necrosis. Cell size in apoptosis is reduced while it is enlarged in case of necrosis. Plasma membrane is intact in apoptosis but its structure is altered while it is disrupted in case of necrosis. The cellular contents disintegrate in apoptosis but they remain inside the membrane and there is formation of apoptotic bodies and there is no leaking of cellular contents from the cells. While in case of necrosis, there is enzymatic digestion and cell contents leak out from the cells. There is no inflammation in case of apoptosis while there is frequent inflammation in case of necrosis. Apoptosis is often physiological but it may be pathological also while necrosis is always pathological. Let's talk about mechanism of apoptosis. Apoptosis is regulated by biochemical pathways that control the balance of death and survival inducing signals. It is a complex process and it is tightly regulated. It includes proteins like receptors, adapters, procaspases and caspases, pro and anti-apoptotic factors. There are two pathways of apoptosis. The first is extrinsic pathway which begins with the death signal. Second is intrinsic pathway 
which begins with the lack of survival signal. It is also called as mitochondrial pathway and this pathway is responsible for apoptosis in most physiological and pathological situations. Both the pathways of apoptosis differ in their induction and regulation but both culminate in the activation of caspases. What are caspases? They are cysteine aspartic proteases which split peptide bonds on the carboxy terminal end of aspartate residues in target substrates to produce pro-apoptotic substrates. They are mainly caspases 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Activation of caspases is a cascade because activation of one caspase leads to activation of other caspase. Caspases 8 and 10 are called as initiator caspases because they initiate the cascade of uh, reactions and caspase 3 is called effector or executional caspase which bring about the apoptosis. The first pathway of apoptosis is a extrinsic pathway which is also called as death receptor pathway. It is involved in the elimination of self-reactive lymphocytes and killing of target cells by some cytotoxic T lymphocytes that express fast ligands. Extrinsic pathway is initiated by presence of death signals in the extracellular environment like tumor necrosis factor alpha and FAS which is also called as CD95. This positive signal is delivered by a ligand to the cell targeted to undergo apoptosis. And this death ligand is present in the activated T lymphocytes and this death ligand interacts with the death receptor which is FAS and this is present on the target cell. So the interaction of death ligand with the death receptor activates this receptor and it brings about the recruitment of adapter protein called as FAD that is FAS associated death domain. So it activates pro-caspase 8 and 10 which are also called as initiator pro-caspases and they are converted into caspases 8 and 10. The caspases 8 and 10 then convert pro-caspase 3 into caspase 3 and this conversion is again uh, facilitated by caspase 9. Caspase 3 is an effector caspase which converts apoptotic substrate into apoptotic effectors and thus cell apoptosis occurs. Now how this pathway is regulated? This pathway is regulated by protein called as FLIP which is fat like inhibitor protein. It uh, inhibits the conversion of pro-caspase 8 and 10 into caspase 8 and 10 and thus prevents the further cascade of reactions and it prevents cell apoptosis. There is another protein called as IAP that is inhibitor of apoptosis proteins which inhibit pro-caspase 3 conversion into the effector caspase and thus it inhibits cell apoptosis. This inhibitory effect of IAP can be stopped or inhibited by another protein called as MAC that is second mitochondrial derived activator of caspase which is released by mitochondria and thus the regulation of uh, extrinsic pathway occurs inside the cell. Second pathway is mitochondrial or intrinsic pathway. BCL2 gene family controls the con uh, permeability of mitochondria. So BCL2 gene family has various uh, anti-apoptotic and pro-apoptotic genes. The anti-apoptotic genes maintain the permeability and integrity of mitochondrial membrane by keeping check on the pro-apoptotic genes. So BCL2 subfamily that is BCL2, BCL, XL, MC1 they are anti-apoptotic and Bax family that is Bax, Bax and Beat, Bad, Puma they are pro-apoptotic. So the mitochondrial integrity and permeability is maintained by the keeping the balance between this anti-apoptotic and pro-apoptotic genes. So mitochondrial or intrinsic pathway begins with the lack of survival signal. So when there is cell injury or growth factor withdrawal or if there is DNA damage by radiations, toxins or free radicals 
or whenever there is protein uh, misfolding so in that case uh, this activates the bh3 sensors and this bh3 sensors then activates the bcl2 family effectors which are the pro apoptotic genes like bax and bac and this uh, bax and bac increases the mitochondrial permeability so now let's see what happens when bax and bac genes uh, increases the mitochondrial permeability the cytochrome c which is present in the mitochondria are then leaked into the cytosol and they form complex with the protein apaf1 which is a apoptotic protease activating factor 1 and this cytochrome c and apaf1 then form complex with pro caspase 9 and this is together called as apoptosome so this pro caspase 9 is then converted into caspase 9 and this caspase 9 converts the effector caspase that is pro caspase 3 into caspase 3 which then forms apoptotic effectors from apoptotic substrate and thus apoptosis occurs in the mitochondrial pathway regulation of mitochondrial pathway this pathway is regulated by a anti apoptotic gene that is bcl2 it inhibits the bax gene which is responsible for increasing the permeability of mitochondria and thus uh, by inhibiting uh, the bax gene it uh, prevents the leak of cytochrome c from mitochondria into cytosol and thus it uh, inhibits cell apoptosis the other uh, inhibitory protein is iap which can inhibit both pro caspase 3 and pro caspase 9 This inhibitory effect is stopped by the protein SMAC, which is released from mitochondria, and thus the mitochondrial pathway is regulated. Now let's talk about p53 and apoptosis. In the previous video on cell cycle regulation, we have discussed uh, the role of p53 in DNA damage repair, in cell cycle arrest, and uh, we also know that it plays a key role in apoptosis by inducing the mitochondrial pathway. if dna damage is not repairable then p53 induces apoptosis by increasing transcription of pro apoptotic genes like bax and bac and apoptosis occurs by mitochondrial or intrinsic pathway mutation in p53 gene and bcl2 gene family leads to inability to induce apoptosis of cells with damaged dna hence cell cycle progresses with damaged dna and it leads to neoplastic transformation uh, and that's how alteration in genes regulating apoptosis is the important molecular mechanism of carcinogenesis and evasion of apoptosis is the hallmark of cancer in the next video we will discuss about general overview of cancer thank you for watching